Thank you very much. I would like to first to, to thank the organizers and especially Professor Howist. And I would like to start with a last minute addition to my presentation, which is one of the first figures that he has presented uh, on the introduction, which actually linked opinion and information to emotion. What I would like to present is, is a slight change of point of view. That is, I would like to uh, present a model in which uh, the information and emotions actually influence the opinions that we have uh, and uh, express in the context of, uh, of uh, various interactions. Uh, first of all, a little bit, very short introduction, why opinion? Because opinion is one of the, opinion modeling is one of the traditional uh, directions of activity in uh, so-called sociophysics. There are many instances, many ideas that would actually allow to use physical models, statistical physics, agent-based modeling, to describe the opinion changes in societies. And I don't have to explain why changes in opinion in societies are important. We, fortunately, we live in democratic societies and such opinion changes dictate the results of elections, for example, and therefore they dictate the way we live. So understanding why people change opinion, generally in social context, is important. One of the things is that uh, this has been studied for more than 20 years. The interactions between the agents, I will you know, supplant the word agents for the word, of peop word people. The, uh, the, the interactions usually take place in some networks, in some environment. It may be a Euclidean space, uh, one-dimensional, two-dimensional. We had uh, examples of such spaces already in the presentations. Or uh, in some, on some network, like a scale-free network. Uh, as I told you, there are multiple models. In the 20 years that have passed since the original uh, introduction of the uh, sociophysical approach, there has been many, many models, their variants, their combinations. So why another model? Why should I not stick with something which has been tested and, and, and improved? Some of the reasons come from my studies of the, uh, of the internet communities, the observational studies, which have shown that you cannot really decouple opinions from emotions. People express themselves both informationally and emotionally. In fact, one of the, the definitions of the emotions via the consequences is that there is a it's also a way of to, 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 to express information in a specific way. However, most of the models that, that, uh, that were presented uh, are based on a, on a slightly simple, or maybe I should say simplistic, uh, approach in which the current opinion is influenced by the opinion of others or the, the agent own opinion previously. Opinion influences opinion. This is not really the case in, the, uh, in, the, um, re in reality. Not just the opinions, not just the information. Uh, I give you a, uh, um, I might give you a, examples of situations which being surrounded by people of other opinion <coughs> does not change our opinion at all. Uh, Imagine a, a football fan of, of, of Barcelona surrounded by a hundred fans of, of Real. I mean, they have a very strong influence on him, but he will not change his point of view. He will not change his opinion. He might run away. He might get beaten, but he will not change his opinion. So we must think about things that influence the opinions other than opinions uh, themselves. So, okay. The weaknesses of the previous models are okay, are the one assumption which is very good for simulations because if the change in the opinion is easy, then you can run the simulations quickly and we know that we don't change our opinions so easily. Uh, many models assume that if two persons interact, at least one of them will change the opinion 
And we know that we talk with people and we stay the same as we were. So we exchange the information without changing ourselves. So that has to be taken into account in the model. Second, most of the models, not all of them, most of the models assume that the interactions bring people together, the, the opinions closer together. Uh, eventually, many models are actually focused on getting consensus in society. Yet, when we look at the real societies, we see that the, conflict, the internally conflicted societies are present almost everywhere. So that needs to be explained why conflict is present and why it is apparently very stable. The third uh, is that it is very difficult sometimes to map the simulation to real life in terms of time, for example. Uh, the simulations, usually you see the number of Monte Carlo steps. What is a Monte Carlo step compared to a year, an hour, a week? We don't know. It is difficult to map the simulations into real life situations. So, as some of the previous speakers, I have turned back to psychology. We have to go back to make the models more realistic. And in this case, not just to social sciences, but to psychology of individual reactions to influences. And when I started to look up and on those fields, I got overwhelmed because that field is, is so complex. That field is so confusing, at least to a physicist. It was a real problem for me. Uh, there was a review on, on, on attitude change uh, in which Petty lists 20 influence factors. Now, try to map it into any simulations, try to assign some real values. This is horrible. However, there was one model that caught my attention because, first of all, it is simple. Second, it has been used in real studies. This is the so-called CASP catastrophe model. Uh, the catastrophe theory was, was quite popular many years ago. Then, then it went into hiatus because it was uh, uh, considered to be uh, unprovable and very difficult to apply. Then, in the past 10, 15 years, actually rather close to 10 than 15, it has reappeared because people have learned how to map the observations into the CASP, cat CASP catastrophe uh, model. What is this model? First of all, uh, this, is, this is the figure taken actually from, uh, from one of the uh, classical papers on there. And it says that uh, the opinion, which is the vertical variable here, is dictated by two control variables. One of them is called normal, and actually in this, in this paper it was the information about the issue that was considered to be this, this normal variable. And the other, which is called the, uh, the control <coughs> variable, is the involvement. What is important is that if you're at the low involvement, then if you receive positive information, you change your opinion to positive value. However, if you are highly involved in a case, then even if you have information that points into one opinion, you still stick with the opposite opinion until you come to a place when there is a sudden jump. So if you move back and forth with the information, you observe some hysteresis. Uh, but you also observe what is very important, that for the same information and involvement, people may have two conflicted opinions about the issue. So the same conditions, two different opinions. However, the model, as nice as it is, and it has been used to actually explain some, some real world situations, is extremely difficult to apply to agent-based sim simulations. Why? The reason is that if you move on a two-dimensional space, the dynamics of, of, of individual behavior would depend very much on the trajectory that you move in the parameter space. And if you 
you know, there is too much freedom. Two continuous variables, how to assign them to the agents, how to measure them in reality to make the simulations comparable to reality. Then that overabundance of freedom makes the model very difficult. Uh, actually, there's an old saying, give me five parameters and I can fit an elephant. Here we have two groups of parameters, both continuous. So it's a lot to be fitted. Uh, so predictive value would be weak. So the idea is to turn from this continuous model to a discrete one. We pick up just seven points on this, on this whole surface that are the most typical and most important for the low values of the control variable. And here, I note the change, here the control variable is the emotion, or more precisely, the arousal or agitation level. So here, the emotion is zero. There is no agitation. I will use the word calm for these agents in those states. And these are the guys that have the information depending on minus or on plus or neutral. And they linearly depend on, on, on the information they have. However, for the high emotional state, there might be agents that have uh, information pointing to the minus, information neutral, but still their opinion is minus. Or you have the second branch, the positive guys, which have either zero information or positive information, but these two, again, the same parameters, control parameters, but different opinions. So only seven discrete states. They have intuitive meeting. I will come to it in a second on the table. They have intuitive meeting. It's easy to assign. So the simulations right now can be easier to, 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 to under, to, first of all, to do, and second, to understand. The, the seven states, emotion, zero for calm agents. For A, agitated agent, agents, the emotion, the arousal is plus one. And here's the information about the issue. Plus one, zero, minus one. For the calm agents, there is one to one correspondence between the information they have and the opinion they have. They are rational. They know how to reason, and they are not driven by emotions. However, here, the opinions, there is no, for agitated agent, and I believe many of you will agree with me, if you're agitated, you tend to have an opinion. You might not have the information about the case, but you already have an opinion. So seven states, and now with, this is individual agent. So now you, you do a population of agents, each of them described by these three parameters. Opinion is the dependent variable determined by the uh, information and, evo and emotion. Second leg of this, of this um, model is that the agents communicate via messages. It might be emails, it might be uh, posts in the, in the forum, it might be even utterances in the conversation. Uh, and this is, one, this, is, this is important because the frequency of those messages is actually mappable to a real world situation. We know how often people exchange emails. We know how often they write messages on, on discussion boards. We can even talk, measure the, the frequency of the meetings and talks. So that, that's important in terms of the real life comparisons. Second, what, what happens with, with individual ag agents? Someone sends a message. Recipient of the message will change its state regarding, with respect to the type and the content of the message and its previous state. Messages carrying information result, uh, individual, sorry, messages carrying information change the information, not the opinion. They change the information held by the agent. Opinion is changed by the interplay of message and recipient emotions and information. 
So the easiest way is to, 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 to describe it is via transition table. Here is the recipient. Here is the message content, which is equal to the state of the sender. Uh, the empty fields are those in which there is no change. And the general remarks on this are calm messages, these three, usually leave the recipients calm. The exceptions are here in red, when they excite the recipient without changing its opinion. Give you an example. You might talk very calmly with someone. And if that person is in a rational mood, he will accept, at least partially, your information. And he will change from supporting the M opinion to zero, because he accepted the rationally the information given by the message. However, what may also happen with probability PA is that the person, the recipient, will be irrational or irritable, both fit. And hearing calm but opposite message, he will say, no, 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 and become agitated and move to this, to this state, AMM. Uh, the agitated messages, angry contrary messages, agitate calm opponents. So if you read or if you receive a message that is angry, that is agitated, in turn, you become agitated yourself. On the other hand, if you have a calm message, you were agitated and you receive a calm message supporting your view, then, my goodness, this reasonable guy supports my view. OK, I may now quieten down. I may now get calmer, because this guy supports me. So I get less agitated. As a result, we have a, we have a, a transition table. If we have a transition table, then we can, then we can describe the evolution of, of, the, the, evolution of the um, agents in the society uh, using the relative frequencies of those states. One important thing is that uh, this, I've chosen a very peculiar starting state of the society. Many physicists or sociophysicists use the random distribution as a starting. Now, in so sociology, random distribution is very unusual. So what, what I decided to do is I decided to start with a society that knows very little about the issue. Most of the agents are in the C00 state. Calm, no information, no opinion. Only 1% is informed about the issue, and they are calm. But I divided this 1% into a majority. 0.66% are the CMM state, and 0.33% are in the P state, CPP state. Just to see if this asymmetry is important. Remember, it's just 1% of the agents. If you do any-to-any -any interactions, that is, in a society, anyone can talk to anyone, then you can write a set of equations and solve them as a, I don't want to go into details of those equations, and solve them and get the evolution of the system. What happens in this case is that initially they were all C00. There were very, very few. Note, this is a logarithmic scale. Very, very few uh, calm but, uh, but opinionated agents. After a very short time, about 20, 25 messages per agent, when the evolution of a system is, is quite dynamic, it goes into a fixed state in which there is a majority of calm agents and two equal fractions of the agitated agents of differing opinion. There is the minority, agitated plus, and there is the group of agitated minus. Now, any-to-any -any interaction is typical for certain interactions in, in human societies, but usually we only talk to a limited number of our acquaintances. So I chose, 
to also to simulate the effects of the limited range of interactions. Uh, I chose to present the results for a square lattice, not because it's particularly typical for, for, for social simulations, but because it's visually compelling. You can see what happens. But the same arguments I expect would work for the uh, scale-free networks or real social networks. So uh, there would be a, a parameter which is called the number of neighbors. For example, eight neighbors correspond to a distance one from the agent. And what happens in the, in the, in the system evolution? This is time, time 5, 10, 50, and 300 messages per agent. If the range is 1, the initial phase in which the, uh, the randomly seeded knowledgeable agents gather support. They gather support <laughs> from the uninformed society. They grow. They start to touch each other at the, at the contact points between the agents that are opinionated, the conflict point, the conflict agents, the agitated agents appear. The dark lines, the dark points are the agitated agents. The green and orange are the calm ones. After a certain time, you get regions of calm agents surrounded by war zones between the factions. And these accumulate and evolve very slowly in time. Now, if the distance of interaction is increased, th that's a range of seven <coughs> squares from the agent, then initial evolution uh, well, looks roughly the same. That we, we also have some regions. However, they are dotted with the conflicted agents somewhere inside. But because of those, those long-range interactions, the calm minority vanishes. The only thing that is left are the calm majority and the conflicted agents that are fighting each other because they have different opinions. If you look at the time evolution, note time here is, is in logarithmic scale. We have a decrease of the initial population and uh, the majority, the calm majority appears. This looks like, especially this one, looks very like the result for infinite range, any-to-any -any communication. There are two specific times. One time in which the initial evolution, the, 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 the conquering phase of the neutral agents ends. And the second one when the minorities disappear. T1 and T2. This dependence on, on, on stabilization time depends on the probability of excitation. And it depends slightly on the probability of excitation, but it also depends in a power law on the number of neighbors, on the range of interactions. And the fact is that, that the um, two exponents found were very close to one, which actually means that the, uh, there's a very reasonable assumption that there is an inverse proportionality of this, of this stabilization time between uh, the stabilization time and the number of, of neighbors. And the, probably the most surprising for me, but surprising in the terms that I didn't think about it, seems obvious afterwards, is is a question, why do people always think that they are in majority? And let me go back. It's, it's, a, it's often a, a very simple explanation. Here we have the very short range interaction. The orange guys are in minority, in absolute minority. But what does this orange guy see around him? Orange guys. He thinks, and when asked, he will answer, I am in majority, unless he's given the information from polls or something like this. But personally, you know, all my friends are, and you put whatever you want there, all my friends are, 
So if you do that, if you look at the, uh, at the results of the simulations, the first, the first graph is the true distribution. So you see that very quickly the CMM majority gains majority. However, what is the word seen by, by the guys from CPP? Well, they see themselves as majority, even though there is only about 7% of them at the end of this, of, of this particular simulation. So <laughs> they see themselves as majority. The same applies, the same applies to, to, to those guys. So I'm getting short on time, so conclusions. First of all, uh, using only two variables and a very, very simple model, it was possible to arrive at, at, at and, and you know, also the, the very simple model in terms of, of geometry and topology. It was possible to arrive at a certain observations that are quite close to reality. First of all, difference in opinion this, of the distribution by specific agents from the true one. They, we perceive ourselves myopically. We see only our neighbors and we see, okay, within my circle, everybody thinks like I am. I should be happy. I mean, well, the, the other guys must be minority because I see majority as thinking as myself. Second, in the absolute long-term evolution, the minority may be preserved. There is no consensus. And the minority is preserved because the minority enters the irrational state. The minority is always the agitated agents. And they persist because they're unreasonable. No amount of reasoning will convince them. Third, the agitated agents in this final configuration, the agitated agents are always pa paired. There is the agitated plus, agitated minus, which are, barring some fluctuations, uh, the same value, which can easily be used to explain the results of many elections, which end up in 50-50. Uh, I mean, if you look at the US elections since uh, 1988, the deviation from 50-50 was always less, less than 10%. Why? Because the people that go and vote are the agitated ones, and they are matched. The key in winning an election is to mobilize the, the calm agents to go and vote. And this is, this is the point in which many electoral campaigns fail because most, I think we had that discussion yesterday that the negative arguments in, the, uh, in elections are more uh, effective. Yes, but the negative arguments work for the agitated agents, not for the reasonable ones. And you have to mobilize the, the rational majority. Thank you very much. That's a message for our politicians. Thank you very much. Any questions? I must say that I don't agree with you about this minority, about this majority point of view that everybody thinks that he is in majority. In fact, the question, do you think that you are in majority, is an important criterion to, to detect the, the vari variation of public opinion. It was beautifully described by Elizabeth Noir Newman in her book about spiral of silence, translated. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm very glad that you're using the catastrophe for, for modeling social interaction. I am quite a fan of it. And I remember there's a work in psychology which is proposing a gas catastrophe for the fight, fight or flee reaction. Yeah. So you have like the original Zeman. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I'm, yeah, from, from, from Sander. From the yeah. And I remember that he was, uh, so of course there was no simulation, there was nothing, and he was saying that the possible limitation for his application was to distinguish arousal from all the other variables. That it was such an important or such a salient one 
that it will not be possible to distinguish, for example, dominance that was their opinion from from the road Do you have any plan to test this with reality? Uh, indeed, this model is similar to what Julian Jankiewicz has presented. It is still at the stage of a toy model, but. The reason why I asked so many questions about decay of emotions and so on during this, during this, this conference was that, yes, I desperately need input parameters, psychological input parameters, <coughs> to change this model from, from a toy, from square lattice, to running on real communication network with real psychological parameters. And then we can talk about whether it fits the reality or not. And I think that also partially answers uh, your question, on, on a square lattice geometry, it is easy to obtain uh, this myopic view. On, on a scale-free geometry, it is much more difficult to uh, not to see the real majority via the network. So, what you say also is very true. I have a comment, for example, that it is, I uh, understand it, the, the original work on the catastrophe theory um, ha had a lot of excitement, but uh, didn't go so far as I remember it, really because it was very hard to uh, to calibrate data to that system. And I mean, that whole story is to do with uh, a certain mathematical system, which essentially is continuous, <coughs> etc. And I just wonder what, what you show the kind of uh, discretization of category theory, uh, of catastrophe theory. Um, and so it actually is not catastrophe theory, it's a sort of something else. It's a, uh, and what's interesting about catastrophe theory is that you have this um, multi-value possibility, so that's where you get the jumps, yeah. uh, and, and, and that's a very, very nice story. Um, so I, I just wonder, if you, you talk about data there, but the kind of data you're getting from social systems, um, you know, what kind of scale is it? Is it on, on an appropriate scale for applying catastrophe theory? Uh, catastrophe theory effectively would apply you've got something like real numbers. That's why I walked away and presented and focused on the discrete model. Because for a single person, getting the state of agitation in 0, 1 is relatively easy. Getting their opinion or information they have is relatively easy. So you could go and put the questionnaires outside and, and try to get the people to, 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 to really classify them into those seven states. Now, to do it in the whole real by real R squared space, that, that, would, be, that would be, some people have attempted it. Some people have attempted it, but uh, they ended up in, in histograms with seven values. So I said, if seven, why not three? Why not simplify it more? more? Just, um, just, it's a new idea to me, but I, could you uh, have a, a version of Chaffee theory based upon not a, um, a scale like real numbers, but something like an ordinal scale? I don't see why not. I think it is possible, that yes. That would be much closer to social data where you, you don't feel 17.92 pleased about something, but you're more pleased or less pleased. Uh, I don't see why not. I mean, this is just taking a subset of points, yes. This is the extreme version, the least number of points that is significant. But, uh, but yes, you can. Thank you. Well, the next speaker is simply Okay. What material is the Yeah, this is a reduction. The is always and uh, it cannot be means because uh, it, it is made of uh, irrational people. Yeah, but uh, I was wondering how, what is the role of the opinion makers in this, uh, in this uh, landscape? Because, uh, I mean, they can change opinion. Uh, I mean, the minority can become the majority in the long term. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, actually, uh, these results, uh, are very new and uh, you can find some reprints uh, outside on the previous paper which considered the role of media, of propaganda. That yes, it is possible to change the opinions if you influence it from the external sources or, which I haven't done, if you put the influentials in key positions, high 
highly connected positions in a scale-free network. But yes, definitely this opinion can change. Y you can impose a new opinion, but it requires a lot of effort. Okay. Oh, time. And, ti and time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you.